a new report published just today by the National Urban League finds all is not equal for black Americans. The report says when it comes to economic and social status, black Americans are missing about a quarter of the equality that white Americans joy, enjoy. The 2024 State of Black America report takes a look at how things have changed for black Americans as we approach now the 60 year anniversary of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And the report analyzes new data on voting, poverty and incarceration rates, among others, as well as President Biden's progress on his commitments to racial justice. Mark Morrell is the president and CEO of the National Urban League and is joining us now. Mark, thanks so much for hey, thank coming you for in. Having me. Uh, hey. it, it is fascinating and important to look at this issue. Your report says black Americans just enjoy 75 percent of the pie when it comes to equality. Why that 75 percent? What's behind that? What areas are are unequal? So thank you for having me. Context. 60 years after the Civil Rights Act of 1964, when the divisions in America, the playing field of, in America was far more uneven. So the first question is, have we made progress since 1964? Obviously, the answer is yes. However, parity uh, is still elusive. Uh, and today, while we've made progress, that parity still remains, if we continue at the pace we've been going, 180 years away. Wow. So these are numbers, statistics, social and economic statistics, home ownership rates, jobless rates, income levels, wealth levels, uh, life expectancies, death rates due to diseases, 300 data sets we compile into an index to try to make it easy and understandable for people to get a sense of not the rhetoric of equality, but the actuality of equality in America today. So that report's available for free at stateofblackamerica.org. Now, what can be done to then accelerate the rate that you mentioned 180 years at the rate we're going that, you know, will still be unequal if we just keep on keeping on. Have you been able to identify what it'll take to get there faster? Well, let me just identify, if you will, before touching that, what thwarts progress. So in the instant case, we now see a new aggressive backlash. It attacks diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is really about economic opportunity. It attacks access to the ballot in terms of voter suppression, gerrymandering, voter purges, for example. It attacks tools like the child tax credit and the earned income tax credit, which lift uh, people out of poverty. So in many respects, yes, there's a policy agenda from minimum wage to a commission on reparations to substantial reform of policing and accountability and the criminal justice system. Yes. And I think I help, I like people to remember that from 1965, 66 to 1980, after the passage of the Civil Rights Act, after the Voting Rights Act, after the Johnson Warren Poverty Program, the nation made significant progress. Since then, there's been progress, two steps forward, yeah. one step back. And that's the context of today. So I remain powerfully optimistic, but realistic that we've got to resist the resistance movement that is seeking to thwart progress in America. We only have about a minute left mm -hmm. here, but I'm curious to get your take on just your assessment of the Biden administration. I know this is something you looked into and it's an election year. What's your assessment? We looked at President Biden's commitments, his promises and his performance, and he fares well with significant unfinished business. So I think we have to urge people to look at the facts and look at the record. What did the president promise? He promised uh, uh, an African-American woman as vice president. He promised an African-American woman on the Supreme Court. He promised an economy, and now the black unemployment rate is about half of what it was the day he took office. So when we look at the facts, uh, the case is that the president has substantially met, but we also recognize unfinished business in a range of areas. So this is a progress report. Like student loans. More on student loans. Voting Police rights. accountability. Voting rights. Living wage. A commission on reparations. There are a range of things. We outline them in the report that we uh, encourage uh, the president to double down on 
emphasize and renew his commitment. But let's be honest, his commitments, the fact that he made explicit commitments were historic. And I would give the president a powerful mark in terms of working to live up to those commitments. But there is more to be done.